So now that we got a little bit of background on the technologies we're going to use, we're going to check them out and take a look at how to get them started. And then we're actually going to build our first React application right now in this video. So now you can see uh, I'm at reactjs.org. This is an open source React library. Um, and like I said before, this is created by Facebook. And so they have some great documentation in this. And we're going to always basically keep this open. Um, to reference back and forth. Uh, and then we're going to use some of the libraries itself on GitHub. So everything on GitHub is open source and we're going to leverage that open source. All those developers working on these frameworks, making them better, uh, we can leverage that for our own use. And so the first one we're going to use is React Create an App. So this is just basically an, a quick way to get up and running with React. Uh, since it is just a library, uh, you need Node as the server to get running. You need to hook that up with React on the front end, uh, and then any other modules that you need to get set up. React Create an App actually does that for us, so that we get straight into just code. We have to worry about like setting everything up, which is sometimes a pain in the ass, but uh, <laughs> React Create an App makes it super simple. Uh, as you can see, it has a ton of stars, 61,000 stars. That doesn't really mean anything really, but it doesn't mean that people are actually looking at it or they're using it. And from what I've noticed, there's, a, like I said before, there's a ton of jobs actually using React uh, every day. Another we're going to use is React Native. So React Native is the mobile version of React. It just leverages React's code and then kind of translates that to native modules within either the iPhone or Android. And you can see it's very popular, even more, 72,000 stars. Uh, and then the actual framework itself is, this is just plain React. This is not anything of, if you want just the plain library, this is it right here. Um, and it's very similar, like I said, it's very similar to Angular or Vue. Um, speaking of which, Vue is very competitive. It's completely unrelated. But if you've ever used Vue before uh, and would like to argue its merits against React, I would love to know why. It has 123,000 stars and it has more than React, basically. Um, from what I've noticed in the job market, if you were to find all the view jobs, uh, and all the jobs related to React, uh, I think more than 75% of them would be React and there's not a ton using Vue. Uh, there's a ton of huge companies using React, which is why I'm confident using that for a project. Uh, not only does Facebook use it in their Messenger app, uh, but also their marketplace app is completely built on React and React Native. Um, Instagram also use Instagram itself, not our Instagram app. Instagram itself used React. Uh, recently, they transferred over to Native development, and I'm going to go through that a little bit later as to why they did that. Um, but to show you that we can build the whole thing in React Native, it's not uh, anything wrong with the technology itself. It was kind of a business decision from their end, um, and so. Uh, these are the technologies we're going to use. Uh, React is the main one, and then other things are built on top of that. Uh, at the, the bottom layer is React. Uh, React Create an App is built on top of React, and then uh, React Native is built on top of React, and then even further abstracted, Expo, which means we don't have to work with Xcode, uh, the native IDE for iOS, uh, which is a pain to get set up. So we're going to leverage another technology so that kind of is all up and running for us. And like once again, we could focus on just the code. Expo is kind of like the Create React app for uh, mobile development. So it's really quick to get up and running. And there's a lot of native modules already set up um, and running smoothly, which is awesome. And then the last one we're going to use is Firebase. Like I said, Firebase is just our database. Um, I already have a, a database set up for us. Um, you could do authentication. This will handle all the authentication. Uh, it will also handle the database. And you can see we already have a structure in place of our activity, which is the likes, uh, messages, comments, and so on. Uh, our messages to individuals, uh, each post, and then the users has their own table as well. And then the last one in Firebase is storage. So you can see all these files with the random numbers are photos that have been uploaded into the application itself. As you can see, there's some test photos of myself. 
Um, and so we're going to leverage all these technologies, which is free to set up to get started. And so in order to get started, we're going to start with a actual web application. So I want to show you how you can use some of the same code for web as you can for iOS, as you can for Android, which is awesome. Um, and especially as one developer, you get so much more done versus before React and React Native, you'd have to have a web developer, you'd have to have an iOS developer, you'd have to have a, a Java developer, and now you could kind of do what, well, the job of three people, which is kind of still blows my mind, honestly. <laughs> Um, so now if we go to the Create a React app, uh, it's super simple to get started. As you can see, there's three commands, npx create react um, app, and then the name of your app, my app. And so we're just going to go and get started with this. Uh, if we open up our terminal, I have a folder just called code just for projects like this. Uh, and then we're going to copy and paste that that uh, line of code. So npx create-react-app, that's the command the command line knows to create this app. And then we're going to name it whatever we want. Um, new, let's just call it react app. And that will go in and get everything set up on its own and create a repo for us to get started coding. And then once we're done, we're going to CD into our name of our app. So we didn't call it my app, we created a React app. Uh, so we're going to CD into React-app and then npm start. So right now you can see it's still getting set up. So here we go. Here's the commands itself. So we're going to CD React-app and then we can do yarn start, we can do npm start, or we can do mpx start. This is kind of all the same exact thing. Um, I would honestly stick with npm start because that's what we're going to use for React Native and Expo. Um, so it's just good to like kind of, there's no right or wrong, but just be consistent uh, and not switch back and forth between yarn or npm or mpx. So we're going to do um, npm start. And then this will start our term, our uh, our server, and open up our application for us. So you can see this is very simple, just a logo and then uh, a link to the documentation that we were just at. And so if we want to check out the code itself, we're just going to open up a new tab. And we're going to, I'm using Sublime, so I have this command already set up to open up files in my terminal. So we have a few folders here. Uh, we have node modules, which is, I wouldn't worry about that one. That's what npm install does. It installs these modules based on the modules in our package.json. So if you were to remove these, this whole folder and delete it, you could just add it back by doing npm install. Um, and then it'll, it'll take off all these dependencies and uh, install new node modules based on those dependencies. And then you can see some of the scripts we have. We have npm start. So what when we do npm start, that's basically just running react-scripts uh, start, which is a module that is specific to the React Create app. Just makes it super simple to get up and, up and running pretty quickly. Uh, public is just the file or HTML. So if you've done HTML, if you've done any web development before, this is very familiar. This is just an HTML document. Here's our head. Here's the title of our app. Uh, this is our app. I can't spell. And the cool thing is that there's hot reloading. And as you can see, uh, the title of our documentation, our, our website, updated already without having to do anything. So if we revert back, and then save it, it reloads and it updates everything. So it just makes development super easy, super fast. And actually that, we use that in uh, React Native as well, this hot reloading. It just makes it really quick to do changes and see those changes right away without having to rebuild the entire application from scratch uh, every single time like you would have to do with native iOS development. And then here, 
we just have this div right here with an ID of root. So we're inputting and injecting our React, uh, which is just JavaScript, into our HTML via this root tag. And if you can see, we can see our source. So if we go to our index file, this is the index.js is the first file that, uh, that our application is looking for to load. And we can see react-dom.render. And we're going to render our app. And we're going to look for document.get element by ID root. So this is just plain JavaScript, which will work on in any browser. And it's going to insert this app document into the root. So the root is right here, an ID of root. And it's going to insert this app. So if we just follow this, uh, this documentation, we can just find this app. So app is from dot slash app. So in this same folder, we're going to find dot app. So we have app.js. And this is the app component that's being loaded into index.js, which is being loaded into the HTML document. And so I think it's, if you haven't done React, if you have done React before, you could kind of like fast forward for this. This is, uh, you've done this before, but I think it's good to know how React started. Um, it started just in web, in the web world, um, and then kind of transferred over to native uh, development a few years later. Um, but I still use both in the uh, in the web environment and in iOS and in Android. Um, so it all the logic is all the same. So you'll see this class. It creates a class called app, and it extends the component uh, from the React library. So this is the importing of the React library itself. So um, we have uh, the accessibility to the component, so we're going to create a new component. So you could think of a component as a whole page, or you could think of a component as just a button. It depends on how you code it. Uh, like I said uh, a couple of videos ago, there's no like hard and fast rules around React and JavaScript. Um, there's some best practices, and we'll go over that along the way. Uh, but it's that's what also makes React super flexible, and you can kind of handle it however you want. And as you can see uh, in this application, uh, they handled it. They did a little bit of styling already. Um, they have app.css uh, and then a testing. So for every component, they have a test file, the component itself, and then styling for that component. And you can see that they're importing the styling via dot slash app, so it's in the same folder, and it's called app.css, and that's where we get our styling from. And so this right here looks exactly like uh, regular CSS, because, well, it is regular CSS, and that's kind of what makes it awesome. So you're importing uh, regular CSS into this JavaScript component. So if we looked in, more deeply into this app component, you can see, okay, we see this app extends component and it's rendering and returning what looks like to be HTML. We have a div tag, we have a header tag, we have an image tag, a p tag. This is all HTML, uh, HTML elements, but then we have class uh, name. In regular HTML, it's just class. So this is where it differs a little bit. Um, instead of just referring to a class from your CSS as in in regular CS or regular HTML would just be class equals app, and then that would work. But since this is JSX, not HTML, JSX is kind of importing JavaScript. It makes it look like HTML, but it's all this is all JavaScript, um, and that's why we have to use this custom class name uh, component to import our classes. And it's the same thing for styling. So if you wanted to do styling in regular HTML, you would do styling equals, uh, let's do padding dash top 50 pixels. And so that would work in regular HTML. But in JSX, it would be padding top and then just 50. And instead of quotes, you'd have to do these brackets. So we have to do padding top 50 pixels. And then we want to load, we can see that now there's this white 
space which is 50 pixels tall and that's because we put in our styling. If we remove one of the brackets that wouldn't work um, and then if we were to do regular quotes that wouldn't work either because it, it's not JSX. It's, it's, it's not HTML, it's JSX so it has to have specific syntax in order to work correctly. And then we go down header tags. So all the tags are still the same. So we still have regular div tags, we have regular header tags, we have image tags, p tags, h1 tag, h2, and etc. Uh, but some of the uh, components within those tags are a little bit different. Uh, if we scroll down to this image tag, for instance, we can see our little our first instance of just JavaScript uh, being used in HTML or what looks to be HTML. Uh, we have since we're calling this component logo, uh, our logo SVG is in right here. So this is an SVG file just pulling in directly from the same folder. So. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to do this in just regular HTML. You would have to use jQuery and inject that image into the into the tag, or uh, use quotes instead, and then do dot slash logo dot svg. So that's how we look in regular HTML, but since it's JSX, it's a little bit different. And notice how it's a single bracket since we're already loading, we're importing it. Uh, if we're doing it in line, anything in line has to be double brackets. Um, and I wouldn't worry about all the specifics right now, but I just wanted to do a super basic example to go over some of the differences between HTML and JSX, which is what uh, React uses. And then edit code, so everything down here, class name, we already went over that, href is the same, target is the same. A lot of it's still the same, um, but we're creating a JavaScript component, and then we could use JavaScript inside of this component itself. And that's what we're going to do in the next lesson. We're going to do a little counter so that we're going to just use some uh, JavaScript in this component and be able to change the counter from one, two, three, four, and up and down. Um, and then it, it changes right away. So uh, where you would usually use jQuery to find an element, update that element's number, and then, uh, and then re-render that component, what React does instead is it, it checks a state, a main state, and if that state changes, there's an automatic re-render of the entire document. So you don't have to worry about uh, certain things not updating. React takes care of that. And kind of, that's kind of what the beauty of React is. It always is rendering the most up-to-date state. And if anything changes, it re-renders the whole thing. And uh, there's a different algorithm that's super fast. So it's a lot faster. Uh, the more amount of data you have, it doesn't really make a difference because um, the algorithm is so fast that these things change so quickly. Um, and then we're going to go a, a small example on that in the next video. See ya.